All right. Normal day to day, okay? No imminent death that I just placed, but you're healed, my son. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Demons No be disease. Uh, it seems like you've gone through your life going from all these different hobbies. You talked about tango. You talk about jujitsu. You, you wrestled. You did judo when you were in Japan. Now you're talking. We show up here. You're talking about archery, right? You got all these different things going on. For me, I've only had a couple things that have made me feel that way, that thing, right? Number one is combat. That's that's as good as it gets. For me, jujitsu is the next thing down. It's this empty brain and just awesomeness. And surfing is up there too. Maybe jamming with my band, getting it on in that way. How come you're jumping around so much? And is there anything that you always go back to? So I jump around. I had a, I had a conversation about this uh, with one of my very close friends, Josh Waitzkin. So mm-hmm. Josh Waitzkin, for those who don't know, He's the inspiration for the book and the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer. He was a chess, well, considered a chess prodigy. I take some issue with the name. He doesn't like that label either. Uh, very good at learning just about anything. He's also the first black belt under a uh, incredible jiu-jitsu athlete and teacher named Marcelo Garcia. Legit. Who is? <laughs> and Echo finally chimes in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, when Echo chimes in, he just wants to point out that, yes, Marcelo Garcia is... <gasps> Legit. Legit sure. Yeah, Marcelo is one of the finest grapplers in the last hundred years for sure. And which, uh, which, by the way, makes him the one of the best grapplers in the history of the world and the universe. Exactly. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. No, this is this is completely true. I mean, I, I've not to go down the the Marcelo rabbit hole, but uh, I had the opportunity to train with Marcelo, and it's just another planet <laughs> it's and it, actually it, josh invited me when i when i get out to new york josh said hey come on by the academy i'm like okay yeah no problem i'll yeah. be there so when we're gonna get out there he's like oh we got geese and everything he's like you got everything yeah just like service oh it's so, it's it's a fantastic school that. it's a fantastic school and uh he's applied his learning approach to jujitsu he's applied it to tai chi push hands he was a world champion and he's, he's applied to a handful of things, but not a lot. He's not as, as frenetic as I am. But we've, we've spent a lot of time together. He's a very close friend. And he said, and this is you know, his words, not mine, but he, he feels like I am one of the best people on the planet at getting people from zero to 80% of a skill as quickly as possible. And he's focused on the last 1%, mm. getting someone from 99 to 100. So he works with some of the biggest names in the finance world, uh, people who are very under the radar to get them from, say, <laughs> beating 99.99% of the competition to 0.999. And I think those are complementary skill sets. But for me, the high that I get is different from the high Josh gets. The high that I get is taking someone, for instance, I didn't learn to swim. We talked about this. I didn't learn to swim properly until I was in my 30s. Uh, for a host of reasons I won't bore everybody with, I did a TED Talk on, on why that is as absurd as it is. But taking someone who hasn't, hasn't been able to swim ever and getting them in two days to the point where they can swim, say, open water in the ocean for a half a mile, which is completely feasible. It's completely possible for someone who has some athletic background. That's my high. Showing someone that the impossible or what they thought was impossible is not only possible, but in a time frame that seems completely unrealistic, that's my high. Uh, so I think that's part of the reason I jump around is in part to learn, but it's also being able to teach someone in a way that saves them hundreds of hours and just to see their head go. And you get that, obviously, then you get that satisfaction yourself when you try something for the first time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's there's nothing better for me. I mean, when I figure out, for instance, with, with archery, uh, blank bail practice, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's just like dry firing with a pistol like mm-hmm. to fix your, like, casting or healing. It's like, oh, my, it's the same fucking thing. Oh, my God, you know, and then... I get all excited because I'm piecing these things together or, oh, the way that you train someone, figure out their eye dominance. Like if you're constantly missing basketball shots by like an inch, you probably haven't figured out your eye dominance. It's like, oh, then you shift your center line slightly so you're raising the ball in a different way. Oh my God, it applies in the same way to bowling, even though no one even talked about bowling. Those types of things get me very excited. I always thought I was going to be a teacher because I had these 
coaches and teachers in ninth or 10th grade who steered me from this very bad path onto a much better path. I mean, a lot of my friends growing up, Long Island ended up overdosing, dying. My best friend growing up was one of them or drug addicts or alcoholics. Mm -hmm. And I got steered in this other direction and that ninth, 10th grade window is what I always thought I would go back and teach. So I love teaching. So that's why I jump around. But uh, what, what creates the zone for me is partially just that aha moment is exciting for me. So I, I do spend a lot of my time looking for fertile ground. So it's mm -hmm. a new skill set. But these skill sets compound. So like the better you get at learning any skill, the faster you will learn subsequent skills. Uh, but if I had to default to a few activities, I would say it's, <laughs> and I have to be I'm trying to be smarter about this, but it's a physical activity with a component of danger. That's yeah. it. It's a physical activity with a risk, with real stakes of some type. So that could be rally car racing, which is very physical. It could be jujitsu. It could be a different martial arts, say Thai kickboxing, where I've probably spent the most time outside of jujitsu and wrestling. Uh, those would be the activities that, that put me in the zone by necessity because yeah. the penalties are so swift and so immediate <laughs> and so severe. Uh, strongly incentivized to not think of the Alfrey runs you're going to hit when someone's trying to kick you in the head. 